guys, welcome to Massive Chalice, something a bit different. Um, this is a very strange game, uh, I've only had a bit of a play around with it, I've not done an awful lot so far. Some people might call it a generational roguelike, some people might call it uh, an overly ambitiously complicated sort of turn-based strategy, some might call it a hero breeding simulator, it is all of these things and more, it's a bit weird. We're going to start a new game. Uh, we are going to... Uh, we are going to play on normal. <laughs> I don't think we're going to play on fucking hard. Jesus Christ. We're going to put the tutorial on because I can't remember much about it. And uh, shall we go for all clan names? Uh, let's go for all clan names. Um, and let's... Should we just go for random houses and let's just let it choose them for us. Okay. So, oh god, it's weird. And this intro is going to help try and explain let's a little bit of it for you. So let's patience. watch the intro, shall we? Patience. I don't see what patience has to do with this. It should have happened by now. Life keeps to its own timetable, not ours. Oh, it doesn't stop us from trying. Good morning. Your ruler has see, risen. This is the massive chalice Rejoice. itself. And let Bellow the horns of birth. And the two voices come out of these sides, like these two faces, if you can see them, like made out of Immortal, the chalice. Protector of the nation, progeny of the great bloodlines, master of strategies, eternal conductor, and forger of matrimony. Mm. We're here to advise you on how to handle ruling and commanding. Because we are some sort of immortal god king. Every time. Basically. The horns of battle. Fine, we'll have to do this later. The cadence is attacking. Heroes! Jump Heroes, in. let's the go. Ruler will be with you shortly. So we are this sort of immortal god king, and we Land control the heroes the who come from families. A bit like we Game of Thrones. We just you to take command because our citizens, um. understandably, find it hard to trust a giant <laughs> talking chalice. Yes. We are not just a giant talking chalice. Yes, you are. But the nation will listen to you because you're of their blood. Yeah. So we're the sort of liaison between the, the chalice and the actual the great, great houses. houses. Oh, and one last thing. Unfortunately, the bloodline ritual that was used to create you also bound you to us. So you can never leave the throne. You can never leave you the throne. Do not throne. despair. You can still command your heroes. Look inward, and you will find that your mind... The beautiful thing about this is the heroes anywhere. age. Um, so we need to keep breeding our heroes so to heroes ensure are? that our bloodlines yeah? remain. And we can breed Take traits in and out of our heroes as well. Cadence is out there somewhere. It's really bizarre, but it's really quite cool as well. Um, right. Uh, let's just quickly spam through the tutorial things. Uh, zoom in and out by rolling. Or, yep. Yeah, uh, press H to recenter. Yep. Uh, click on a hero sigil. Okay. Uh... Do I... What do I click on this? Okay. God, this is where it starts to get complicated look, already. Um, so this is Metis Zhang here. He's an alchemist, okay? He's 34 years old. Oh, it's a woman, sorry. It's a her. She's 34 years old. She has the traits brainy, strong-willed, sickly. Her personality is young at heart and insightful, and her status is prime age. Um, obviously, as they hit old age, their stats start to drop off and stuff. Um, also, some of them have things... Um, like, for instance, personality is not influenced by parents or other trainers. So, like, if we put her parent in the same fight as her, she won't be influenced by her parents. Some of them will. Um, she also has a sibling here, uh, who may or may not be with us, who's got young age, nervous, reckless, alert, increased movement, increased sight. Um, some of these guys will have, like, traits that mean they, they're stronger if their siblings are in the fight. So you can get, like, brother-sister combos and stuff like that. Uh, it's, it's, oh god, it's really cool. It's really cool, but I haven't really had the chance to explore it in any great depth, just because I don't get the time. And that's why we're playing it on the channel, so that we can sort of really devote some time to this and see uh, the potential that it has. Um, there's a good chance you've not even heard of this game, and that's probably because there's, I haven't seen many of the YouTubers playing it. It's a double fine game, and it's pretty... I mean, you can already see the sort of throwback to the XCOMs. We've got a, a movement range and a double movement range. So obviously, if we move within single movement, we can then act. If we move to double movement, we, we you know we can't do anything. Uh, this guy's a caber jack, who's basically the sort of melee class, and we're going to send him over there. Um, that's an enemy. 
first catch of the day. That is an enemy. It's actually really hard as well. The enemy is like really strong. We know about moving boundaries. So we don't need to go through that. Uh, this guy's also a caber jack. Let's have a look at his stats. So this is Erdet's Lin. Um, ah, here we go. Personality is strongly influenced by other heroes in combat. Tendency to have sons. Uh, anything else we need to know? How many siblings? Look at all these siblings. Uh, improved stats with no allies in nearby. Lone Wolf. Personality strongly influenced by other heroes. Increased chance to have children. Oh, impressionable and lone wolf. Interesting. Oh my god. So yeah, you can breed these traits in and out by breeding members of the houses with each other. Uh, which is quite cool. Now, this guy's a caber jack, so there's no point moving him single movement. We'll move him double. Um, so I'm going to move him all the way up. Caber Jacks are your frontline fighters. You want to get them up close and personal and do them in. These guys, these hunters, are like nice ranged characters, so they can attack from range. Uh, so I want to put away, she's got a good line of sight against these guys. And let's quickly have a look at the stats for her family as well. Erin Silverberg. Um, lowered evasion when, when at max health. Oh, God. Increased accuracy. Siblings. Jerick Silverberg who's interesting. So later on we'll get to choose our squad that we come out with and obviously we'll try and pair people up. We want to like pick classes that work well together, siblings that work well together, or people that work well with other heroes and stuff, or even like for a caber jack, having lone wolves pretty good, because uh, they tend to be off on their own quite a bit of the time. Um, for now, obviously, it's the first mission, so it's pretty straightforward. We'll get people in range, the enemies will move closer, and we'll take some shots at them uh, and see what we can do. Seeds. Arguably the lowliest of pawns are more nuisance than pawns. Mm, we've already taken a little bit of damage there. One worse. HP damage At on the Caber Jack. Uh, right, so Caber Jack might as well attack this guy. So as I hover over them, we'll see a 60% chance to hit for 13 to 17 damage. It's pretty decent. We do also have some skills. Um, so instead of attacking, we could go for knockback, which is 6% damage, 4 to 5. Uh, charge, charge in a straight line. Obviously, this guy's on an angle with us. We'd have to move to make use of that. So we'll just go with an attack. Uh, and if we miss, at least we've got these guys at the back who can take the shot instead. Let's attack this target. Nice. How about that? Eh? How about that? Down, untold millions to go. Melee attacks will never miss. Oh, but sometimes glance for reduced damage. Oh, okay, I see. So melee never misses. If if you do miss as a melee attack, you just do sort of reduced damage. Uh, this caber jack can't move all the way over there. So let's move this guy within a single movement, and then we'll take a shot if we can. Um, Stealth move we can't use. What does follow up do? Second shot. No, let's not use that yet. Let's use the standard attack. So you can see the little icons. I can't move my mouse on because they disappear when they go. Unless I select him. There we go. So this little um, eyeball means that this creature, we can see him. We are in line of sight directly with this particular hero. And the arrow means we're within ranged attack in range. Um, so we can take a ranged attack at him, which is quite handy. It saves you like wasting your turns. Um, and as you'll see, if we select a different hero at this point, um, we can hover over him and see, like when we move to certain squares. If you look at the, uh, if you look at the thing, the readout on top of this guy, you'll notice that right there we, we're within range and sight. But if I move to like there, suddenly we're no longer. Look, you see the difference in those two squares. So you can see before you move whether or not you're going to be able to attack the enemy from where you move to, which is huge. It's something that I always wished had been in XCOM, because there's nothing worse than moving to a square and then realising you've just lost line of sight of your enemy. Um, so this handily tells you if you're going to be able to take the attack or not, which is brilliant. Um, let's take this attack. 88% chance for 10 to 13 damage. And down he goes. Um, obviously choosing who to attack with is quite important because they'll get XP during this mission. Um, and XP is pretty good. You don't want to spread it around. It's nice to get one person and power level them up, especially if they're young. Because by the time, but basically by the time the next mission come round, comes around, it could be 20 years from now. Uh, and some of these guys might be too old to even fucking think about fighting. 
So choosing a young character and giving them a bunch of levels in a single fight seems to be a pretty good strat. Um, so let's... We need to move out. I'm guessing... I like the Fog of War. I'm guessing that's where we want to head towards. Um, but obviously there could be enemies anywhere. So we're going to split our units up. These two guys are taking their turn. So I'm going to send this Caper Jack this way. There we go. We just spotted another seedling over there. And then these two guys I'm going to send over this side. Uh, I'm just going to move you single move first to see what we can see. And then we're going to do the same with you just to see if we get any visuals. Standard XCOM style. Uh, we're not seeing anything, so I'm going to move my alchemist forward a bit. And there's nothing to see, so I'm going to move my, uh, my hunter as well. And then we're probably going to send that caber jack that way as well, I reckon. This guy has spotted us, but that's fine. Okay, let's get our caber jack to uh, give this guy a beating. 72%, that's pretty decent. Oh, wow, glancing blow, only two damage. Sad times. Luckily, we'll bring our hunter over and take a shot in with him as well. 95%. Done. Excellent. Getting some good uh, good XP on the old hunter there. Uh, I know about the hero skill, so that's fine. Now then, Caber Jack. Let's run this Caber Jack. In fact, let's not run the Caber Jack. Let's move this one up. So now we can start to see how far... So if we move to there, we can take a shot at that guy. Let's do that. It's so nice to be able to see that. We've spotted another enemy. I don't know if he's seen us or not, but it's okay. We're going to take a shot on this guy. We got him. Beautiful. For glory and riches. They all have um, sayings, like house sayings. And you can customise it and give give your clan their uh, their own sort of battle cry, like Game of Thrones style. Whether ah, you want them to shout, Winter is coming, or uh, Iron from Ice, or Bring whatever you want. Uh, blood and Fire. Not worth much in a it's fucking brilliant. Battle, but they make up for it with their nasty exploding flasks. Just watch out See, we can't fire. get into a position where we can attack big, that guy. So we would well. have to move we'll into double movement back. range just Trust to get us. visibility on him. On um, so I'm just going to move him there. And then the caper jack. I guess since they were going to converge around the middle, we'll send him up this side. Because it looks like he can move furthest up this side. There's another enemy spotted. Oh, where's it going? It's sort of wibbling around up there. I don't think it knows which way to go. It's sort of it's debating whether to come that way or this way. Uh, but we're going to go up the middle anyway. So this guy over here, can anybody this reach him? Jack. They hit things with a caber. Not really. Sometimes they hit hard and put things down. Other times they hit not so hard and just knock things out. Yeah, <laughs> deb. <laughs> Simplest way of life there is. Right. Caber jacks. Found purveyors of Get those caber jacks up there. And then, should we let the alchemist take a shot at this guy? So now you see we've got this icon here, um, which is the alchemist attack icon. So we're already in a position where we can take a shot at him. 72% for 11 to 15% damage. It's pretty decent, but I'm going to move him closer anyway. Uh, still the same amount. So alchemists, um, basically their attacks allow them to do AoE, uh, throw flask, and free throw, which is where you can throw it yourself. And you can see we get this grid. Um, so, like, if I throw it directly on him, it's actually a lower chance. But if I throw it here, you can see the different chances of me hitting those squares. Like 98 there, sort of thing. Um, so, it, 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 you can see the range sort of drift off. The closer to me it is, the easier it is to aim that shot. Um, throw flask... I mean, I think if I hit it there, it's going to do slightly less damage to him. But he doesn't have much health anyway, so I'm going to take the extra 10% and go there with it. And it should still damage him. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Cogito Ergo Vincho. Uh, I think they're for him invincible, maybe? Does that, is that what that means? Something like that. Uh, let's move our hunter around this side as well. Oh, we've got another hunter over here that I completely forgot about. Let's move her up. 
these standards and the battle cries as well, you can customise all this shit. There's like hundreds to choose from. There's like serious ones and then comedy ones that have been provided by users on the Steam Workshop, I think. Um, and they've all got like sigils and names and um, sayings for the house and stuff. Uh, so you kind of have them shout like, Leroy Jenkins and shit like that. It's brilliant. Okay, there's that other guy. Let's spin the camera around and let's uh, let's make our way in there. Let's send our Caber Jacks in to draw him out for a start. Oh, there's three more little bastards. Okay, no worries. We'll keep sending the Caber Jacks in. Because they need to get into range. And we'll bring Hunter up the back here. And we'll also bring the Alchemist in as well. I mean, at this early mission, we don't have to worry about troop positions so much, but later on, there's there's guys with AoEs or things that hit in a line and stuff, so, like, position does become important as we go on. Uh, sometimes I'll get flanking bonuses as well, so there's that to consider. Um, and there's various environmental hazards as well. Um, and I think the Alchemist, when he throws his flask, I think they can hurt allies. Obviously, throwing a flask there is going to be very nice, so I'm going to see if we can do that now. It's only a 48% chance, so let's... Oh, shit. Blasted Fucking misclicked that, didn't I? Jeez. That was bad. That was really bad. I meant to cancel and I fucking right-clicked instead. Oh, shit. Oh, well. Never mind. Uh, we'll just have to roll with it. <laughs> I didn't want to do that either. Shit. Okay. Oh, that was annoying. It was all going so well. And then suddenly, it all went so badly. Never mind. We'll see what we can do. <laughs> We've lost a couple of people already. It's okay. We'll get some more. Don't worry about it. Humans breed quite rapidly, and we are eternal god king. We can wait centuries uh, for the bloodlines, so it's fine. Shit. Fucking alchemists. So alchemists, as you can tell, are pretty, pretty dangerous, really. Uh, it's not a good idea to fuck about with them. Luckily, as you can see, if I move here, we can actually take a shot at this guy over the railings. Um, and it's a 95% chance. So, boom. Never mind. Never mind that we lost some heroes. <laughs> well done. Well done. It wasn't the best, was it? It wasn't the best. Oh, shit. This, this chick's level 19, though. Oh, it's a guy. He's level 19. He might be a good guy to concentrate on leveling up. Um, probably more so than... Oh, he, that is his sibling. Yeah. I think if we click that now, we can probably... Yeah, we can unlock his next move. Um, he's got skill trees that we go down through. Obviously, the first one is just a single skill. So, there you go. Uh, he's now level 2. And... I don't think we can unlock anything for anybody else. So, GG. We'll just proceed. Right. So this is our nation, and as we said, we are not in the best of shape. That muck you see surrounding us is the chaos. Right. It's what created the pawns, corrupted our lands, and is so this this shit like here is the cadence. We do have one advantage. Cool of wank Thanks to surround the place. Enchanted materials that make up our body, we've been endowed with certain powers. One of them being a way to cleanse the cadence from this world. It's really quite a miraculous process, wherein we harness the properties of... The thing is, it takes a long time for us to charge up for this. Mm. A, long a long time. time. Like, generations. All of the heroes you just commanded in battle will be long gone when we're finally ready. And with all that time still ahead, we need you to protect us. You will take charge of the nation, command its citizens worthy of becoming heroes, Ooh. and ensure that the cadence does not reach... It's a big challenge. Battle. Now let's check out that keep you just saved. I'm guessing it's this one. The keeps. Okay. Bloodline forges of the nation. Okay, now you can see how it starts to get really fucking complicated. <laughs> Here you will appoint one hero as a regent and one as a partner. And the more experience they have, the more they'll pass on right. to their children. That goes for traits and personalities too. Everything is gained. <sighs> okay. And keep in mind. Signing heroes to keeps retires them from combat. So we can breed out our heroes here. But if they're here, we can't select them for the missions. 
so it's a double-edged sword. On the one hand, a guy who le level three is probably a good one to breed out. On the other hand, we can't take her with her in the next fight. Um, now, to be honest, I guess there's nothing wrong with that. I feel like putting Erin Silverberg here would be fine because we've still got Jerick Silverberg that we can take out with us. That she, he's also a hunter. Um, can we look at her stat? She does have cocky, which I don't know if we want to breed out. The problem is I don't know enough about like what all the stats do, and it gets really fucking complicated. Like I mean, look at this guy. We've got an infertile guy here who can't even have children. Um, I feel like yeah, high fertility. I, I feel like getting some fertility straight on with these two. Um, obviously, this is the guy who is nineteen, who I wanted to keep around and level up though. Um. Bountiful. But he has, because he's young, he's got high fertility. Let's uh, Should we do it? Should we put the Linns and the Silverbergs together and breed them? Um, let's appoint you as the regent. Now that your regent is appointed, it's time to decide on a partner. Although this isn't an arrangement out of love, who knows? Maybe it'll and as you can you see, it tells you roughly what sort of classes to expect from um, from the breeding. But just because this is an arrangement of necessity doesn't mean you should reduce these heroes to a pile of numbers yeah. either. They deserve better than that. Uh, so, trainee class enforcer, trainee class hunter. You see, the, the enforcer is not even a class we've got access to yet. You start with the three classes, hunter, alchemist, and caberjack. And to unlock the others, you need to breed these characters together. So, breeding with Kevin Zhang uh, would give us the trick shot class. Um, but I think for now, we'll go with Yuri Lin. We'll go for the best chance of breeding some heroes as quickly as possible. Because um, since then, we just lost two. I guess we want many as many children as possible. Let's give the newlyweds some privacy, eh? So we leave those two guys to breed. We can no longer take them out on missions, but now they'll breed. Uh, they should breed some enforcers. They might still breed hunters and caber jacks. I'm not sure. Um, and they may pass on some of their traits as well. How Silverberg? Fucking sweet. It's a lot to take in. Uh, it is a lot to take in. Or your mind will become as crazy. <laughs> it's really complicated. Now then, please join us back at the capital so we can show you some of your other... Because that's not even the end of it. There's more. There's more to it. There's still more to this game. And welcome back. You are here, right? Yep, I'm here. It's a little hard to tell if you're still in your mind's eye or whatever. No, I came back. This is where your heroes return to after battle. Right. From here, you may equip them with any skills or weapons they may have earned, okay. as well as perform research. Oh yes, Basically, research. Basically, we can devote some of our power to help the war effort and the nation. Whether it's building new keeps, starting a sage rights guild, or a standards crucible. Oh god. Yeah, because this is also like a bit of a base builder. <laughs> Just to really fuck with your head. Um, building more keeps is likely the most pressing option. Yeah, building a keep is probably the most lights, important thing I want to do don't first. Don't shun the other possibilities. So, with your approval, we can research weapons, potions, armor, and if the amount of time required mm. dissuades you from researching... So in a way, this is a bit like, I guess the, the sort of closest thing I would compare this to is a bit like, you know, Warcraft, like, um, the time Warcraft for any 3, pursuit. when you had, like, the hunters, you, like, you build the little buildings again. and each one would allow you to, like, Keep research mind, things. Most of our it's a little bit like that. Up to Let's just cadence, tag all this shit so, so it stops showing up as new. energy to research one thing at a time. That includes searching for yeah. new Yeah, uh, let's start with the keep. It takes a lot of effort to find people attuned Because this, this allows us to only get read new bloodlines and do stuff. But choose whatever you want. I've gone for a keep. I think they recommend a keep to start with. Um, so we can choose where we put the keep. Oh, depending where we put it, we get other bonuses. So, um... I think we have to click it before it'll tell us exactly... Where's a good place? I feel like the Cinderlands. What happens there? No. Does it tell us? Oh, there's one that's got a bonus. Caberjacks have plus strength in Ebert Marsh. Alchemists have intelligence in the salt stacks. So it looks like the outer region the outer regions are the most dangerous. Increased fertility. Reduced construction time. All heroes plus kill XP. That seems pretty decent. Should we go for this region? Let's, let's do it. 
Oh, yeah, one more thing. The end of this war is not even a glimpse on our horizon yet, but your immortality gives us an advantage. The ability to step back and let time pass. Right. You can start and stop this timeline at will, but we'll also stop it for you should something require your attention. Excellent. Like a cadence like attack. A cadence attack. Is a probable possibility. So this is where it turns into sort of a bit like the... Do you remember XCOM? Not the new XCOM, the original XCOM, where you were on the globe and like you could like set time going and then just wait for shit to happen. That's what we've got coming up here. Uh, we've got five years and 219 days, so that keep that we just put is built. It's going to take five years just to build the, the keep. And our heroes will age those five years as we go. Um, it's going to take 300 years to actually charge the chalice. So that's when they said it was going to take a long time. They weren't fucking kidding. 300 years, by which point, obviously our heroes are going to be dead. They live standard human lifespans, so we're talking like... 60-ish years, uh, if we're lucky. Some of them might die from other things. Random events happen. All sorts of shit happen. Let's click. Let's start advancing time, basically. Um, and these are actual years ticking past. Five years have just gone by. We've built a new keep. The horns of birth. A new kid has been born. for celebration indeed. Babies have been born before today. And it was glorious every <laughs> time, was it not? What, unbearable shrieking and smells wow. that are even worse? That's your idea of glorious. Yes. <laughs> right, so we've got a brand new baby born. Uh, obviously, again, we're going to have to wait a good, like, what, 17, 18 years before this kid's ready to even go into combat. So just wrap your head around how complicated this game is going to get. Um, the traits is carried over. It's an enforcer class, so I was right about it taking either the parents or or the new combined class. Um, so we got an enforcer. So that was from a caper jack and a hunter. Um, impressionable, strongly influenced, decreased movement range. That's a bad trait. We could have done with breeding that out, really. No personality yet. It's a child, young age, obviously. Um, it's called Gmish Silverberg. <laughs> wow. And here are the stats. And it's like. Oh god, it's so it's so fucking complex. So that's that dealt with. Um That was just the child being born. There's still a year till the keep is, is fully complete. So let's carry on. We've got another year to go. There we go. It always feels weird. New keep has been been, been completed. Uh we need to get a new bloodline on the go. Books after I was done with them. So, um, we haven't had a fight since, so the only high-level heroes we've got are from, from the fight that we went into. Um, so now, as you can see, the, the, even the heroes we took with us are like well into their 30s now. This guy's hit 40. means he's probably not going to be much good as a, uh, as a fighter anymore, so why don't we set him up as the regent here and breed him with someone. Guy Regis um, of House Regis, the Caber Jack. Um, he has clumsy, oh god, quick and quick study, flincher, that sounds bad, reveler, tranquil, uh, let's appoint him, let's appoint him as our regent and then choose him a wife, um, this looks good, Marie Rittersback, chance for children high, trainee class blast capper, we've also got trainee class shadow jack down here as well if he takes a, oh but that's a male. I don't think he can have kids with the male. Chance for children, none. In fact, all of these are males. The only possible wife out there are the two women from the house Rittersback. And one of them is infertile. So he's going to have to marry Marie Rittersback. Now luckily, she's also 41, so we don't really want to take her out anyway, I guess. Um, so let's do it. Ch high chance for children. Probably a blast capper. Marie Rittersback, you've just married into house Regis. Nearsighted. Brainy though, hearty, faint-hearted, reckless, tranquil. So tranquil, I think both of these guys have tranquil. Whether that increases the chance of passing that on to our kids, I don't know. I don't know. We're going to have to figure this out as we go. Chance for children high, training class blast kappa. Let's do it. Let's marry them together. House Fulbin's motto is, I am a bear. <laughs> Brilliant. So in combat, they will actually shout that out. Like when they get a kill and stuff, they will shout, I am a bear. <laughs> Excellent. I'm pretty sure you can like... Customize the houses. I'm not 100% sure um, We can also now we've built a cube we can go in and do something else with our research 
Uh, do we want to build a Sage Rites Guild? Uh, all it requires a hero is willing to retire from battle and take up, this, take up the white, basically. Um, and it allows us to increase research. Crucible. The hero promoted to be the standard would help boost the experience of trainees. Could be good. Or we could train some armor for the Caber Jacks. Could be good. We could train weapons for the crossbows. It takes 12 years though. We could research health vials. Could be handy. What does discover new heroes do? Hero discovery boost. I don't even know. I don't even know. I feel like the Sage Rites Guild might be good. Getting that early, you know. If it, if it speeds up research, the quicker we get that, surely the better the return. Um, so let's build a Sage Rites Guild. We just need a hero willing to retire from battle. Well, we've got nine years to build the bastard, so hopefully by that point we can find someone willing to retire. Um, so let's do that. Uh, choose a region. I feel like we want to build this close to our capital. Maybe here, because then it's surrounded by two keeps and our capital. So let's put it in... Although, do we get any bonuses for putting anywhere else? I don't know if we do. Let's put it there. Let's just put it there. So that's going to take nine years to do. That's a long time. Um, at this point, I'm also going to... If I press escape, I'm going to save our game. Uh, I'm going to make a new save. Um... Because the other save was just me pissing about trying to figure out how the game works and whether it was even YouTubeable, which luckily it is. Uh, I'm going to make our save there, and we've saved our first game of Massive Chalice. That's where I'm going to leave it for the first episode, guys. It might have been a long first episode, because obviously I had to show you the intro and explain sort of how the game works. Um, so yeah, basically over the course of the next 294 years, we're going to try and save the world from the Cadence. It's going to be fucking complicated. Uh, hopefully you're already intrigued enough to keep watching. Um, and I guess we'll find out next time uh, whether those two guys have uh, a Blast Kappa baby. Uh, and whether or not we'll get into combat. I think we will. I think we're due for a fight pretty soon. Um, so we'll have to choose which heroes to take out. Um, and we really need some females. Given what we saw when we married these two people off, we do not have a lot of eligible females. So maybe... Maybe when we build the Sage Rites Guild, we might adopt a baby girl um, to try and get some females into the bloodline. Um, or basically hope that, that House Silverberg has has a female baby, <laughs> and that would help. Oh, God. So, that was Massive Challenge, guys. I'm going to see you next time. Bye-bye.